Hi, my name is Sean Salsa, founder of Purpose Creates Impact, host of the Teenage Impact Podcast, where you will find the inspiration to get over your struggles as a teenage kid. I was bullied, had anxiety, depression, had friends pass away, and battled confidence issues for a majority of my life. Whether you have the same issues as me, feel lonely, face challenges in your home or in school, I'm going to be interviewing people who overcame these struggles and provide you with tips on how you can overcome yours. By the end of this episode, I want you to rate and comment on what you think of the podcast. This will allow the podcast to be ranked higher and serve more teenagers. Hi, this is the host of the Teenage Impact Podcast. This is your host, Shlomo Salsen. And today I have a very special guest with me from Indonesia, Matthew Huston, Hust, Hudson, also known as The Bookmatic. How are you, Matthew? I'm fantastic. Doing great here. Uh, just relaxing at home and uh, excited to be part of this program here. It's an eleven hour difference. It's uh, about seven a.m. here, and about yeah. six p.m. here. Where are you over? Yeah. So a little bit about Matthew, aka a Bookmatic. He's uh, he's building a brand around inspiring people to read more. He's I've been following him since the early stages of his brand, and now he's grown his brand significantly since then. But We've all had our challenges. When he was a teenage kid, he was diagnosed with ADHD, and then he was also, and then rheumatoid arthritis. When he was in school, he was put in the lower levels, and with all the other kids who, I guess, weren't portrayed, quote unquote, as smart. And that kind of hurt his confidence as a kid. It hurt his self-esteem. And then um, he always got distracted when he was younger. And uh, he was not really good at managing time in school either. He worried about, he worried too much about what other people thought of him. He felt inferior. He was insecure about not having a girlfriend. And he lacked confidence for the majority of his life. Good thing he had a good group of friends to always uplift him. Or else he probably would have fell into depression as well. Matthew, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and what you've gone through as a teenager? Well, I would say, you know, my my childhood and teenage years were were actually pretty good. Like the way that you described it made it sound really bad, but I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. But, you know, as I look back on it, I feel like I was not as confident as I am now. And, you know, there's certain things that I did to overcome uh, my shyness to people. But, yeah, back, back then, like, mm, I guess because I was in the set in those lower classes, because when I was in elementary school, I was diagnosed as, uh, as ADHD. So the school system put me in a lower class. And uh, they kept me in it all the way through junior high school, all the way through high school. Even though by the time I was in high school, I had already figured out how to deal with my ADHD and how to focus in a bit, bit more on my homework, on my class studies. So these classes that I w- was in were just way too simple for me. I was passing with all A's, like, you know, by the end, uh, when I graduated, I had like a three point something, maybe I only had one B or something like that. So, but yeah, it just made me feel bad because I was looking at all these other kids that were uh, in like advanced classes or just even a normal class where they were reading, I don't know, animal farm. Like in my classes, they didn't even assign those books because they thought, could not read them. So that really decreased my confidence feeling to people. I felt like I could not talk to other people that well 
because I was in a low class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, um, when, when, when they first put you in those classes, how did that make you feel? Or you didn't really think too much of it? Well, yeah, I mean, I was, I was only like seven years old when they put me in those classes. So at that time, it didn't really make a big difference. Hey, why, why do I have to be in this class when I know that I have the ability to be in these other classes? Hey, Mac, with, can you repeat that for a second? Sorry, it broke, up, broke off a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry about that if the connection breaks off there. So, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know where it cut off, so I'll go back a bit. Um, so then it actually put me into those uh, – uh, they actually put me into those classes at, when I was about seven. And at that time, it didn't really make a, a difference to me. But once I got into high school, I was just like, oh, why do I have to be in these classes? Why can't I just be in an, a normal class? And I say normal because what the heck is normal, right? Yeah. But I felt like I had the ability, but they just would not budge. Like even my parents went to the administrators and they talked to them and tried to get me into uh, an the regular class, the average class. So, but it just didn't budge. Mm -hmm. So it just made me feel, uh, it made me feel dumb, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like guess my ability was not good enough. That's so true because I guess people, society in general, um, look down on ADHD when it's really not a bad thing. There's so many people I guess that are diagnosed with it is just they need p probably a different way of studying and that's it it doesn't it shouldn't be classified as dumb or smart one of the most successful people I know I guess were diagnosed with ADHD yeah it's yeah. very true uh it's it's really something that we just have to like learn how to deal with and actually it can be an advantage because people with ADHD tend to have more energy. Uh -huh. uh, it's just, you gotta like narrow that focus in. I was, uh, and a good example, I was reading this uh, book called, um, what was it? The Storyteller's Secret. And ADHD kids or people are like uh, race cars without brakes. <laughs> yeah. So it's like rushing out there, going fast, can't slow down. So if we if we're able to like design a break to be able to uh, focus our energy in the right direction, then then we have power like Richard Branson, right? I think he had ADHD and dyslexia or something like that. Yeah. And look at where he's at, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Growing up. Um Tell us a little bit about how you lack confidence and self-esteem as a kid. Um, well, I guess it just had to do with the fact that I couldn't really articulate myself very well. Like my speech was a lot slower. Um, I, I felt awkward talking to, to people. Um, What's so, an example of a time? Can you remember a specific example when you felt awkward? To be honest, I can't really uh, think of a specific example. Um, I just I just remember I didn't talk a whole lot to other people except for my friends mm -hmm. that were close to me in band, in cross country. Those were my two groups that I really relied on. And you I got along with- You ran cross country? Huh? Did you run cross country? Yeah, I run in cross country, even though I have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which still really affects me today. Um, it helps for me to stay active. And it helped a whole lot back then to stay active by running. I, I could not do any like heavy lifting weights or, or playing American football or anything like that, because that would just 
hurt my hands, but running, I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, just getting in that, that flow of running and just, uh, what is it, the runner's high, you know? Yeah, I love I always it. always try to achieve that. And yeah, it was amazing feeling and amazing community to be a part of. Um, same goes for bands, like just playing music and getting in the getting in the groove and uh, just letting the ideas flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, sorry, a little bit off topic because I saw you ran cross country and I, I used to run too. I still do run kind of out of it right. in the past few months, but trying to get back into it. But let's go back to your confidence. You said you're you're lucky to find a group of friends who kind of helped you out as much um but you didn't really talk much um did that include so in school were there times where you kind of felt out of place when your friends weren't around uh i felt out of place well you know like i i knew i had the ability in me to mm -hmm. to communicate and to be better it's just sometimes i i guess i worried about what other people would think mm -hmm. about the way that I talk or about the way that I act. Um, yeah, so that really, maybe that was the aspect that stopped me from talking. Okay. Worrying of what other people would think. Yeah, so really we, we cannot... We cannot do that. Like we, we have to prevent ourselves from worrying what other people think, because uh -huh. they're gonna just continue thinking what they think. That doesn't even matter, right? Like we just have to live our own life, yeah, and uh, and do what we want to do and say what we want to say without having to worry about other people. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us, uh, you also mentioned that there's a lot of um, peer pressure in your life. Okay. Uh, now, when I, re when I refer to that, uh, I, I refer to like when I was pressured by my uh, brother or my other friends to uh, smoke. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so you back then I was, I was into smoking, like uh -huh. marijuana and, and cigarettes. So that was, uh, I would say that was experimental stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of re I regret doing that. I, I don't think it was a good decision on my part because, you know, I needed to focus on, on school and uh, focus on like not being so awkward. And, you know, maybe I made the decision to smoke because i felt like oh i could fit in with these people mm -hmm. uh, but yeah it's just it's, it's not a good crowd to be around and it's not really a good thing for your health to do or your mind to do especially when you're growing like smoking marijuana is, is very bad mm -hmm. for the brain yeah. uh, when you're growing uh, I don't know what the science, science is behind that but i felt like it affects me in a bad way Mm -hmm. I felt like it affect, affects my mental state in a bad way. Okay, and how did you do under pressure in school? Like if how if, did I do under pressure? Yeah, like when there was a lot of pressure. Or, sorry, with with what? With exams or or uh, peer pressure or? Yeah, just before we were talking, you also mentioned that you didn't really do well under pressure. Right. Yeah. Um, I at that time I did not like change. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, if if the teacher all of a sudden sprung a, a pop quiz on us, I'm just like, oh crap, I'm not even prepared, and like mm -hmm. it just would make me feel stressed out. Yeah. So I I like to have my daily routine and maybe that has something to do with the ADHD. Yeah. So like when I create a routine now I have like so many routines and I try to follow those. Uh, but of course, if I want to change them a bit, I can. And, but yeah, having that routine would help me to stay on track. If that routine got broken at that time, I would 
feel stressed about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not feel good, but I would get back on track and do the best that I could, even if I fell behind a bit, whether it was on an assignment or um, whatever it may be. Yeah, I try, yeah. I try my best. So let's go back to, um, I guess, people, uh, they diagnosing you with ADHD. Um, how did that affect you when you were in middle school or high school? Besides um, making you feel insecure at times, how did that affect your studies? Were there times where it really did affect you or did it, was that something society was just labeling on you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I really do. I mean, I, I believe I still have ADHD because uh, sometimes I have the problem of not getting work done as fast as I could get it done because sometimes my brain is over here or over here. And so back then, same issue. Like uh, usually if I wrote a, a five page paper, let's say for example, it would take me twice as long to do that compared to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, reading a book takes took me at that time a very long time just to read like one page might take me four minutes right so it was a matter of focus and the ADHD really affected my focus it's an interesting concept I'm gonna kind of I'll go a little bit off topic but um, do you think you know they label it as ADHD but do you think um, it has to do with passion because sometimes when you're not passionate about something or when you don't like to do something, your mind starts to wander versus like if you're doing something you really love, you lose track of time and you're doing it so well. Because I know I used to have that problem where in school, I never paid attention. My mind would always wander, but it's also because I didn't enjoy what I did. But when I'm doing things that I love to do, then I'm 100% focused and nothing distracts me. Yeah, um, I believe that part of it has to do with that. But I think that ADHD mm -hmm. is a true yeah. disorder. But, yeah. but like, yeah, when I do something that I love, I put my... Uh, 100% focus as much as I can into that. And I believe it was the same back then as well. Like whenever I played in, in band, band was my major focus back then. <laughs> like I was completely into playing my trombone, playing in the jazz band, playing in the orchestra. And uh, anytime I got the chance, I would play. So that was my love. That was my passion at that time. And in, yeah, uh, that <laughs> so yeah, but I did love other subjects. Like, I liked the creative writing class that I took. Like, I guess writing has always been one of my passions writing stories. Mm -hmm. And I still love writing now. I love writing on my blog. Uh, I love writing social media posts on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, so, writing has definitely been part of my life. So, yeah, anytime. I would do something that writing or even history, I would just get into it, absorbed into it. Uh, mathematics, I would lose focus, hated it. <laughs> so yeah, I really, I really do believe that focus, or, or sorry, not focus. I believe that uh, doing something that you love, can you can really get focused in on it, even if you have ADHD. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh how how did you start overcoming your confidence issue in high school and college or w when you're growing up uh i i would say i i didn't truly break out of my confidence issue until i was in uh university okay but still uh, i i saw a little bit of progress by the end of High school, like I started making new friends outside of the uh, uh, and like putting myself 
out there a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And definitely like one thing that I've learned more recently is just try to conquer your fear of doing whatever you're afraid of, just get out there and do it. Like, yeah, you're, you're going to be afraid of doing it at first, but once you cross that threshold, once you uh, experience that fear for the first time and you don't completely freeze up or faint or something like that, like public speaking or whatever it may be, uh, then after that, it becomes much more comfortable. The second time is still going to be tough, um, but you can do it. Like, I don't know, talking to, the, talking to a girl the first time or something like that. First time is going to be tough. Second time, oh, okay, uh, a little bit better. Third time, you got this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> so, yeah, practice, and- practice, practice. So at when you were in the university or college, you got what started building your confidence was stepping out your comfort zone. Yeah, and uh, getting involved in communities. Uh, in university, I was still taking some band classes. I was actually a music major for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was still a big part of my life, being involved in band and knowing the people in there. But I also... Uh, joined the Japanese uh, Japanese student society. So like we had Japanese kids coming in Mm -hmm. from abroad and we would converse in uh, Japanese and English and share culture. And uh, I also got involved in other international um, community communities where people from all over the world gathered for coffee and ate food and just chat. Uh, and also I got involved in a group called ISIC, which is a student-led organization that talks about entrepreneurship. So like maybe that planted a seed in my mind that I didn't actually start doing until like around 2015 mm-hmm. with Book Mad and uh, just trying to get into this entrepreneurial world. So all those organizations and communities really helped me to meet new people and break out of my shell and really like express myself how I wanted to express myself Mm -hmm. without having to worry about what someone else is going to think. If they don't like me, they don't like me. They can go off and make friends with someone else. If the person likes me, then I can be the best loyal friend to them. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you said you did, was your major again? Uh, yeah, I switched from music education to liberal studies. Okay. I also did a bit of linguistics. Okay. So wow. yeah, my my uh, degree that I graduated in is is liberal studies, though. And, and in college, did you start? Um, were you better at staying focused versus getting distracted? Uh, I was still not. I was still not all that good because it took me like six years or something like that to finish. So it took me a bit longer. But um, there are some like other uh, terrible reasons for that. Like I went. I went through a divorce at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah, I got get, got married like when I was twenty or something, wow. and it was just a that's a whole different story. Yeah. But I I definitely was was very depressed at, after I had got a divorce, mm-hmm. and so that was like in the middle of the university, and that was the worst time to feel the way that I did. Uh, breaking up with someone that I loved at that time Mm -hmm. and uh, trying to get a degree. So yeah, the depression thing just like messed things up for about two years. So that's why it took me a couple years longer because I just couldn't focus on my studies. But after the the whole breakup thing and I was like uh, done with that and clear with that, I focused and, uh, got that degree, which I'm very proud of, you know? Matt, does it really matter that in the long term that someone finishes 
or someone takes longer to do a certain task than another person. Does it really matter in the long run? It depends on what you're working on. Yeah. Um, but like what, what we really want to do is like focus on quality. Yeah. So if it takes you twice as long as someone else, but your, your uh, product, whatever it is you're working on is twice as good awesome mm -hmm. like your uh you know your paper whatever you whatever you have done it's gonna be fantastic if you focus on the quality over the quantity or over the how fast you get it done yeah um but if we're talking about like business then of course that's a that's a different story you know yeah and uh yeah. I know you mentioned how you used to get a lot of peer pressure about smoking marijuana. Did you, um, how did you eventually stop? Um, that was, uh, around, uh, college time. Okay. And I was like, okay, I need to focus on my studies around the beginning of college. Mm -hmm. So I was still like eight, 18, 20. Uh, after that, I, stopped because i wanted to focus on my studies and get my degree uh-huh so it was at, yeah. at that point it wasn't about like hey i don't want to seem cool anymore or i don't want to seem like i'm trying to fit in i just this is something that's better for me yeah there's a couple reasons uh this is better for me i want to focus uh and also i just didn't like how it i didn't like how it made me feel mm -hmm. after school uh the the day of and the week after it just it felt like i was in a fog uh so i just i i didn't want to deal with that and I, I didn't want to feel like that i just wanted to felt feel like my myself without any sort of effect from drugs mm -hmm. or anything like that and in university i did not have the pressure from other people so mm -hmm. it was definitely a lot it was a lot easier to just stop like i don't need this anymore really yes yeah. i guess um everyone's different i feel like <laughs> in college uh there's definitely a lot more pressure well i guess it depends who you hang out with right yeah yeah, yeah. it really does it, that that's very true it, it really depends on who you hang out with uh it boils the, uh, down to who you hang out with because you hang out with the wrong crowd they're going to make you do the wrong things if Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the four or five people that you spend the most time with. I think this is Jim Ron that said mm -hmm. this, right? The four or five people that you spend the most time with, you are going to be most like those people. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a, a successful business person, you should surround your people with. Uh, you should surround yourself with people that are motivated to. Uh, to become better, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not someone that's just going to sit on their ass and watch uh, Netflix all night long. How many books have you read? I know this is an off-topic question, but since your yeah. your uh, brand is around um, motivating people how to read, how many books would you say you read in a year? Uh, yeah, so this has progressed. To give you an idea about how many books I've read in 2015. That's the year that I started reading on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That year I read 12 books. Uh, most of them were nonfiction, probably about actually maybe about half were nonfiction and half were um, fiction. The next year, 2016, I read 15 books mm -hmm. and yeah, the ratio uh, of nonfiction increased a bit. So maybe I read uh, 10 nonfiction and five fiction. Then 2017, I read 24. Wow. So it increased from 15 to 24. After practice, after focus, I became that much better at reading and that much faster. 2018, I read 32, I think. Yeah, 32. And most by this time are nonfiction and just about two or three were fiction. 
this year so far I've read 22. Mm -hmm. 22. I think I might make it up, I don't know, 34 or 35 this year, depending. That's good. And I guess that just proves proves that when you're in school, it doesn't matter if you like reading or not, because I was the same way. I was always getting bad grades in my reading assessments. And I was always the slowest reader in class. So it just proves to you that it really doesn't matter how well you do when you're in elementary, middle, and high school in reading, Mm -hmm. because eventually you're going to enjoy reading based off what you like to read, not what they provide you to read. Right, right. Those school assignments might be a drag. Uh, Whatever they have you reading may not be something that you want to read. And uh, then that will kind of destroy your love for Mm -hmm. reading uh, because you're trying to read stuff that you don't want to read. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, I'm not saying don't read it or anything like that. Like, yeah, you should maybe still try to read, but maybe uh, pick up something that you think you might enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also, if you really don't like reading, I recommend audiobooks. Oh, yeah, I love audiobooks too. Like, now, Matthew, let's yeah. go into the third section of the interview. What are some tips you have for people who might have gotten um, diagnosed with ADHD or some type of uh, physical disorder? What are some tips? Yeah where they might uh, feel insecure about themselves and might not feel as smart as some of the other kids. Just realize that you have, you have this condition for a particular reason, mm-hmm. you know, um, like for me, uh, yeah, maybe I don't necessarily like the fact that I have it, but I feel like uh, it has helped me to narrow my focus in on this book, building up this bookmatic thing. Uh, if it weren't for this, like maybe, maybe I would be doing something completely different, but, um, yeah. So if you, if you are having troubles focusing because you have ADHD, then try to, uh, try to get in more of a routine. Like I suggested this earlier, or I, I said this about myself earlier that I would always uh, do the same things every day at the same time with some variance to keep it interesting. But if you, yeah, if you create a routine for yourself and you give yourself time to study and you give yourself time to relax and maybe you can even break up your study or whatever it may be into blocks of like 20 minutes here or 30 minutes here, Um, because people with ADHD sometimes have a hard time to focus. So if you break your focus into shorter periods of time, that will help you to not get tired or frustrated. So yeah, 20 minutes, 10 minute break, 20 minutes, 10 minute break, something like that. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. And then what about for kids who feel peer pressure to kind of fit in? I know how important having friends is in Mm -hmm. high school. I mean, that's like, that's like one of the most important things at that time. But in reality, like once you graduate high school, you you go off to different, you go off to separate places. Maybe some of your friends or people at your high school will go to the same college, maybe. But yeah, you guys are going to like separate. So I'm not trying to, uh, not trying to make seem, uh, make it seem like friendships are not important. They definitely are. Um, but in the end, people are, are going to go their separate ways. So just try to be yourself and find at least a few people, three, four people that you can really get along with well. And those memories that you create with those three or four people are going to last 
you the the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. I've got a friend that I still keep. I've got more than just one, but I got one best friend that I still keep in contact from all the way back in elementary school, all the way through junior high school, all the way through high school. I still talk with them on the phone, even though I'm all the way in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. That's really the only best friend that I've kept. So yeah, build up a strong friendship with those, with just those two, three, four people. And it's okay to make more friends after that. Mm-hmm. But don't worry about what other people are going to think about you. Build up those friendships. Build up those memories. I love it. And Matthew, do you have any last tips do you have for um, any teenagers who are going through some type of struggle right now? Uh, just stay strong. Uh, whatever the struggle that you might be having right now, just realize that this is not the end of your world. You can make it out the next day uh, and just always try to do your best. Like you can't do more and you cannot do less than your best. If, if you're doing less than your best, then that means you need to try harder. If you're doing your best, then great. Keep on doing that. But if you're like stressing yourself out and you're trying to do more than your best, you're just going to burn out. So just realize that the next day will be better as long as you're trying and um, yeah, just rely on those people that are close to you and realize that life becomes better. Life becomes stronger and you learn from those, those bad, those bad experiences. You learn how to not have to experience those things again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. And Matthew, where can people find Bookmatic? Yeah, uh, we've got a few places. The big place that I definitely recommend checking out is on Instagram, and that's Bookmatic, B-O-O-K-M-A-T-T-I-C. You can also find me on YouTube and Twitter and my website which is also www.bookmatic.com. And definitely check his, uh, some of his videos out because I read. I don't read as much in, in the past year, but I've read in the past few years a lot more than what I used to. And he definitely puts out good content and inspires you to read and get into personal development and kind of, grow as an individual so you're doing a really good job thank you for everything you yeah. do thank you very much as well and for my followers if you haven't done so if this is your first time watching go ahead subscribe and rate and review the podcast so it can rank, be ranked higher to inspire more teenagers and that's it take care <laughs>